Hi everyone and welcome back to documentingsimpleliving.com. Today I am taking you along as I forage for rose hips. They are in abundance right now where we live and I'm going to be making uh, rose hip oil with wild forage rose hips. So join me. So recently I came across a bunch of rose hips at a local community space. And um, yeah, I'm gonna forage a few of them for this rose oil. So these are rose hips. Now, whenever you're foraging rose hips to make oil or tea, you don't want to use ones that are soft like this see they just kind of fall apart they're mushy and the reason for that is because the way you make infused oils with rose hips is you kind of brew them in oil and you know when they've gone soft like this there could be bacteria you don't really know what's in there so you don't really want to use them um, to make to make oils ones like this which are hard and firm that's what you want to go for rose hips are the fruit that come after certain kinds of roses flower and the rose hips contain the seeds for the plant. They are high in vitamin C. People use rose hips to make all sorts of different things including teas which are supposed to be helpful in recovering from colds and flus faster um, and warding them off to begin with. You can make jam with rose hips, you can put them into stews, you can add them to pies, tons of things you can do with rose hips, including what we're doing here today, which is to make an infused oil with the rose hips, which will have beneficial properties for our skin. If you are foraging like me, it's important to, of course, only take what you need for whatever you're making. So while there are tons of rose hips on this, particular plant. I'm only taking a handful because I have some at home already and I don't need that many. The seeds that come in rose hips also have medicinal properties um, that are beneficial. So sometimes online I've seen recipes that say to take those out, but I'm actually going to leave them in today. You can see if you cut your rose hips open, they're kind of hairy on, in, on the inside and they also have seeds. And there's directions to remove those hairs and remove the seeds online but for me um, I'm just planning to keep the seeds in because they have their own beneficial properties and to finely strain off my oil after it's been infused with like cheesecloth and getting the little hairs out that way. The first thing I did was to look at all the rose hips I had collected and pull out any ones that had gone soft or had any dimpling um, because again you don't want to use those when infusing oil. And then I sliced every rose hip in half and I put them on a baking tray with parchment paper and dehydrated them in my oven for I think about five hours on a very very low heat. The lowest heat my oven will go. I forgot to mention that after I sliced the rose hips in half I put them into a strainer and rinsed them off with just some some cool tap water. The reason that I am cutting the rose hips in half is because when I'm infusing them in the oil, I want there to be as much surface area exposed to the oil as possible. So when they're cut in half, there's more surface area exposed. Then I scooped them off the parchment paper and added them to a glass jar and poured my oil over top until they were completely submerged. I used cold pressed sunflower seed oil because it has the same effect to your skin that the rose hips do. So it has antioxidants, it can help your skin have a replenished look, a smoother look, less red, 
and that sort of thing so that's why i chose that oil but say you have more oily skin jojoba oil is a great option for you because it has less oily texture or you could try argan oil which is really lovely for homemade skin oils so those are two options for you if you have a bit more of an oily skin so i poured enough oil over the rose hips so they were all completely submerged and then i sealed the jar and i set it away in a cool dark place for about a month I just set this on a shelf in my pantry. Every so often would give it a bit of a shake just to keep everything moving, make sure the oil was becoming infused. Then I used a piece of cheesecloth to strain off the oil after it had been infusing for about a month. Now to do this, because I did not remove the seeds or the hairs when I started the infusion, folded my cheesecloth in quarters. So there were four layers that the oil went through to just strain off those really fine hairs that line the inside of rose hips. Then I bottled it and that is the entire process. There are so many ways that you can use homemade rosehip oil. You can use it as a daily moisturizer. Just a few drops will be enough to act as a, a nice moisturizer for your face. You can use it as a hair oil. So I like to rub a few drops through the ends of my hair when it's wet to calm any flyaways. You can also use it as a spot treatment on any particularly dry areas on your body like elbows or knees. And it also is helpful in reducing redness. So if you have any scarring, you could apply a little bit of this oil to those areas to help with that. I think it would make such a special gift for friends or family to say that they're locally sourced, wild foraged rose hips that you made this oil for them with. It's just really special to be able to say that. And it's amazing how the plants and herbs that grow wild around us can be used in such medicinal ways. So if you're interested in that, definitely keep following along because I plan to make lots more videos about herbal tinctures and other sort of herbal remedies and skincare products that are easy to source from your native environment. But until next time, thank you for stopping by and I will speak to you in the next Documenting Simple Living video.